Good morning. I'm used to a lot fewer people. Usually, uh, if I'm doing a talk, it's at Shaver Lake, and it's somewhere between five and fifteen. I think <clears throat> I think one Sunday we had maybe twenty. It was a, must have been May or some sometime like that. They had some visitors. So um, I'm going to try to get this on the right page. Hey, and it worked. So this morning I'm going to talk about um, trust in God and trusting in God. And it's kind of the prequel to uh, John's from last week. And no, I don't have all the answers. Um, thank goodness God does. Um, we put on our money in God we trust which is kind of an oxymoron, but anyway. Um, and people say they trust in God and then do silly things. Um, we trust in human beings every day. We get in our car and we go to work, trusting that somehow, some way, they won't hit us. However, I do pray that I get there in one piece because i want god watching over me at all times because i honestly don't trust him as much as um sometimes we say we do the definition of trust is reliability truth ability or strength in someone or something and we try we really do uh but we're human beings and we fail and I trust everybody in this room a lot more than I trust other people. I can tell you that for sure. But we as human beings earn trust to one another. We have to earn it. God doesn't have to earn our trust. He created us. We know that he loves us. We know that he cares for us. We know this in our hearts. And so why don't we trust him as much as we should? I'm going to tell you a little story, and it goes back to about 1974. And I was sleeping one night, and it came to me that I probably should be a teacher. And I thought, well... I don't know. They don't make any money. Uh, and in 1974, there was, unlike today, a glut of teachers. There were more teachers than there were positions open. And I was a junior in high school, and I was having to decide soon what, what I would do when I went to college because my dad had already told me, you're going to college. Um, that wasn't uh, a choice. Uh, the choice was, what were you going to do once you got there? And so, in my great wisdom, I decided that I would be a business major because my dad owned a store for 18 years, and I knew how to do it, and it was comfortable. And so, uh, I became a marketing major. And I uh, struggled through school and made it and passed. And then for the next 20 years, had eight different jobs, none of which were careers. Finally, at the age of 41, I said, you know what? It's time to be a teacher. And... Uh, I can almost hear God saying, it's about time. You waited 20 years. See, now, if I had already listened, if I had listened to God all those years ago, I'd already be retired. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm old enough to be, but I'm not retired because I didn't listen to God. 
I messed around doing different things for all those years, pretending like that was what I was supposed to do, and I didn't do it. And once I did what I was supposed to do to begin with, I've been a teacher for over 20 years. All those other jobs combined were 20 years. And this is the only job I've ever had that I actually worked at for more than five years, except working for my dad because, you know, when you work for your dad, you don't have a choice. <laughs> you can't quit. Trust me, you can't, you can't quit. So I was thinking about trust and I was thinking about how that if we only put our trust in God, he will show us the right way. Don't fight it. Go with it. He has the plan for you. As soon as you hear a man say, uh, I have a plan, you know for sure they have no plan. They don't know what they're doing. They'd like to think they know what they're doing. But the reality is they, they don't really. You know, you need to, to go to the Lord with your requests and your wonderings and your problems and help him help you. Because if you don't, then you're flying blind, as they say. You might as well be in a fog because you've got to be able to see. And the only way to see is through God. And he tells us that a lot in the Bible. A lot. I'm going to read some of the verses that, that I uh, found in looking up trusting in God. I'm going to read six of them from Psalms. And there's more than 14 just in Psalms. Because David trusted in God. And even though he messed up, the Lord never left him. The Lord never left him. I'm going to read Psalms 9, 7 through 10. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge of the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Uh, Psalms 27 and 8. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Psalms 37, 3 through 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will do this. Uh, Psalms 44 through 5. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look on the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you plan for us. None can compare with you. Where I speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. And finally, uh, I want to read Psalms 91, 1 through 6. And this is my favorite ver verse in the Bible as it applies to trusting in God. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. 
You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. You know, we, um, we have a song that we sing. And yes, it's an old one. And I learned it in the Red Book. That's a couple of days ago. Yes, I'm not young. But it's called Trust and Obey. And it's a reminder for us to do that each and every day. Because if we trust in God, then we know two things. One, he won't fail because he's perfect. Two, that he cares more for us than we even care for ourselves. You know, you see a lot of people in this world trusting things in this world. They usually leave the news at night. And that's because of their failures. You know, it doesn't mean that we don't try to better ourselves each and every day of our lives. Tim was giving us uh, uh, lessons on, on self-improvement through, through the Bible. And, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, we need to do that. But we need guidance from the Lord our God. We need guidance from Christ. We don't need guidance from celebrities or people with large egos or money or things that'll all go away. Because this this is just a blip. We're here for just a moment. And the older you get, the more you realize it. Trust me, guys. The older you get, the more you realize it. Because you think about it and you go, well, I've lived this many years and uh-oh, I'm running out of time. Now, of course, this may not apply to my dad, who's 91 years old and in better shape than me. But for most of us, we've already lived, when you get to my age, we've already lived more time than you have left. And when you're young, you think you're indestructible. I know. I thought I was indestructible. I found out I wasn't, especially when I was on crutches. But... We need to think about and really pray about guidance from, from God and Christ. Because you all have questions in your lives, and especially those who are younger than they are older. And those questions can only be answered by him. And your parents will do the best they can. They really will. And they're godly people. And if they are godly people, then they're going to pray about it right with you to try to get the best answer they can. But the answer that you want and the answer that you need is from God and Christ. It is not from anything else. You know, I thought I knew everything. Now I'm the only special education teacher probably on the planet with a marketing degree. What good did that do me? That was a waste of time. I, that's all I can say. Don't waste your time on things that you know God doesn't want you to do. Because not only is it a waste of time for you, it's a waste of time for everybody who's related to you. It's a waste of time for what you should be doing. You know, we sent some missionaries to Nepal, and I was talking to um, Victoria before they left. And she said, well, you should come with us sometime. And I said, well, it doesn't scare me to come with you except for the, the landing strip. And she said, she said what, do you, what do you mean? And I said, well, I watch a show called Expedition Unknown. And they went to Nepal. And she said, yeah. And I said, they were, they were looking for, you know, Sasquatch. Come on, guys. It's entertainment. But 
But the one thing that stuck with me was the runway that you land on in Nepal. You guys know about this runway? Oh, yeah. So, I, yeah, so the runway ends. I mean, it really ends. I mean, at the end is it, there's nothing. It, it, it goes off a cliff. So. When you land at that airport, you better have trust in God and you better be praying because it's it has the most, it's the lowest rated runway on earth. It has more accidents than any other and other, any other runway. And remember, this is Nepal. The country is probably about as big as Fresno County. And it's not LAX that has the most accidents or, or any of these big airports. It's the one with the little tiny runway that ends off of a cliff. And I told her that. And she said to me, you got to trust in God. Why do you think I'm talking about this this morning? She said that. And then I went home and my wife was listening to something. And it was Psalms 91 about trusting in God. And I said, there's your topic. I listened. It took me long enough. It took me, it took my ego enough years to, to get the idea that, hey, you don't know anything. But at least I finally am listening now. And so the only thing I have to say to you is you should listen to the Lord in all he does, and in all that you try to do, get his guidance. Get his guidance. And that way, you have a lot less chance of doing the wrong thing. So in the song, Trust and Obey, it says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with him all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sigh or a tear can abide while you trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but trust and obey. And in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. That he's, what he says, he will do. Where he sends, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. And tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace, entrust him more. Lord, oh, for grace, to trust you more. You can't lose. We know the outcome. He wins. This isn't a gamble. This is a sure thing. And it always will be. You need to trust in the Lord because when you look at this world, it, it, some days it might be the only thing you can trust in. There's a lot of bad going on in this place now. A lot of bad. Not that there wasn't before. I guess the older I get, the more I look at it, the more I investigate it. But the reality is, is that with Christ's guidance, we are, we are good to go. It's, it's good not for just this life that we're leading now, 
but for the eternal life that we have through his son and our savior. It isn't just today. God and Christ are not just in your today, they're in your tomorrow and in your eternity. And that is something you don't ever want to turn down. Because on this earth, old age is a, is a, a hundred for a hundred, undefeated, untied. You know, th your, your life on this earth will end. Someday, some way. But your eternal life will just begin if you trust in God. If you want to put your trust in the Lord, if you want to become part of his family, if you have anything you'd like to bring before the church, uh, please do so as we stand and sing our song of invitation.